Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 11th of November. It's been quite a week, obviously, apart from the Federal Reserve quarter of a percentage point interest rate cut, which markets had largely been expecting. Um, the real news, of course, was the US election and the renomination of President Trump. Investors chose to react very positively to this news. The rising tide certainly did lift all boats. And that's on the basis that um, they're now expecting things like lower taxes, less regulation, etc., to give what's an already strong economy a further boost. There will be concerns further down the line around the fact that the already ballooning deficit will get larger and the possible inflationary impacts of some of Trump's measures. But for the moment, it's been a very strong week. Unfortunately, the UK couldn't quite join the party after an initially positive reaction, not surprising given the uh, focus of the FTSE 100 towards US shares. Uh, markets slipped back somewhat. And of course, part of that was the potentially inflationary impacts of any tariffs that uh, Trump decides to put on the UK, Europe, and indeed China in due course. So in the year to date, the Dow Jones is now up by 16%, the S&P 500 by 25%, the Nasdaq by 28%, and the FTSE 100 some way behind, but up 4.8%. Turning to next week, there's a couple of companies to keep an eye out for. The first one is Burberry, which gives us its half year numbers. Uh, now the shares are up 11% or so over the last week. That's on bid speculation from a company called Montler of Italy, although that's not been confirmed by either party yet. But that doesn't mirror and doesn't hide the fact that the shares are down by 49% over the last year. They've obviously seen their stock relegated from the FTSE 100. They're very much um, heading towards a potential operating loss for this period. Uh, and this is among amongst weak demand, particularly from China. Indeed, when we last heard from them, they said that Asia Pacific sales were down by 23% in the first quarter. So there's a lot for Burberry to do. Also full year numbers from WH Smith. These shares are up by around 12% over the last year. Very much about the travel business these days, which accounts for about 85% of its profit. It benefits from what you might call captive customers. Obviously, we've seen the WH Smiths in hospitals, tra uh, rail stations, motorway stations, but in particular at airports. And that's the kind of thing which has really driven the business forward. At the same time, it too is looking to expand its presence in the US. And finally, there's a trading statement due from BAE Systems, British Aerospace as was. Well. Shares up about 28% over the last year. Um, obviously, some of the things that it's doing, such as aerospace systems, are still moving along at quite a nice speed. But unfortunately, defence spending by governments shows no signs of slowing down, given the amount of conflict we've currently got across Europe in the Middle East. By the same token, of course, that's good for the defence companies, hence the spike in the share price. And BAE is there front and central. Another thing, of course, is that it derives around 45% of its sales from the States, and uh, clearly the Americans aren't looking to slow down spending either. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.